Nowadays, when it comes to action cams, there are plenty of options to choose from, which I think is really great. However, when it comes to skiing, my personal choice is the DJI Osmo Action 4. It's just the model that works best for me. In this video, I want to take a closer look at this camera and show you everything I like about it and explain why I believe it's the best option for skiers and snowboarders. Now, this isn't a comparison video, but there are plenty of them out there. And I do suggest that you do watch them if you're unsure which camera to buy because ski or not your use cases might differ from mine nonetheless i'll give my two cents about other action camps later in this video and to get the elephant out of the room yes i did get this camera for free from dji but they're not paying me and i'll do my best to keep things real and not sugarcoat anything i actually reached out to dji a couple of months ago when i was planning what gear to bring for my upcoming trip to japan and the Action 4 was on my gear list. I didn't reach out to GoPro or Insta360. But yeah, if you think I'm wrong about anything what I'm about to tell you, feel free to let me know in the comments. So make yourself comfortable, grab yourself a cup of tea. I'm out of tap water. And let's dive right in. Most of the time when I'm out skiing and making videos, I have to take care of multiple things at once. Sometimes we have multiple action cams and DSLRs, and I also have to make sure the audio works. So what's most important for me in an action cam is reliability and ease of use, because there are already plenty of other things that can go wrong in the mountains. The battery life on these things is really amazing. I actually never managed to go through more than two batteries in a full day, even in extremely cold conditions. This camera is rated to minus 20 Celsius, but I've even used it in minus 35 Celsius up in the Yukon without any problems. Because the last thing you want is your camera to turn off when you're in the middle of an epic run. <laughs> I'd say on average, when I film a fair bit while skiing, I might be down to 20% battery by lunchtime. Then I just swap it and know I'm good for the rest of the day. And another thing that makes my life a lot easier are the magnetic quick mounts, because I can easily switch from my helmet to my selfie stick for vlogging or any other clip I have on me. And for you Instagram influencers out there, you can also shoot in vertical mode because you just put the camera into the cage that comes with it and then you can mount it vertically. Now I don't really shoot vertical, but it came in handy in the Yukon when I had to mount it to a dog sled and I only had like a vertical beam to mount it to. So that way I was horizontal again. Anyways, we're about to reach the top station, so yep, that's how easy it is. What's quite nice on the Osmo Action 4 is that everything is very responsive and the touch screens work really well, even when there's water droplets on it. My iPhone doesn't even do that. Right now it's powered off, but once I hit the record button, it only takes a few seconds for it to turn on and start recording. So quite like that. I also do quite like the layout of the menu. It's very intuitive to use and very easy to access all your settings from the back or the front. And speaking of logging, I think the built-in mic is actually quite good. But if you even want to step it up a notch, you can connect the DJI Mic 2 to it, which is what I'm doing right now. Let me turn it off so you can see what it sounds like without the mic. Okay, now the DJI Mic is disconnected. And we have the onboard mic. It is quite noisy here, a little bit windy. Chairlift running in the back. And if you have a DJI Mic 1, which is actually one of my favorite mics, which I'm using the most, you could actually connect it right to the USB-C. However, I think for skiing, that's not really an option because yeah, that'll just like fly away once you crash. So not good for me. The Osmo Action 4 is now equipped with a bigger sensor compared to the Action 3. We now have a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor and rather than filling the sensor with more pixels, DJI opted to make the pixels bigger instead, which I think is the right choice because it will improve performance in low light conditions. 4K is plenty resolution for me. I mean the Sony DSLR I'm shooting on right now won't even do more than 4K on a full frame sensor. We also have a lock color profile which will give you extra dynamic range and is the same color profile that's used on many DJI drones. So if you do have a DJI drone as well it will be really easy for you to match the footage of the action cam and your drone in post because you can just apply the same grade or LUT 
And speaking of color grading, we also have 10-bit opposed to 8-bit, which is actually quite a step up because now we're talking about a billion colors, whereas before it was only 16.7 million colors. This means your image is way more robust when applying strong grades and you won't get any banding or artifacts. 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 And here are the different grades for you to compare. Top left is the log profile with sharpness at negative 2 and no grade applied. Top right is the normal profile, also without any grading. On the lower left we have applied the official DJI Osmo Action for a lot to the log profile above. And on the lower right we have the log profile with my personal grading, which I created in DaVinci Resolve. And as for frame rates, we can now go up to 120 frames per second in 4K which is quite nice. For vlogging, I mostly use 25 FPS. And when skiing, I'm usually fine with 50 FPS, unless I know I want to do some speed ramps later on. Next, let's look at the different field of views we can choose from. I recommend standard D-Warp for vlogging, as it will be the most zoomed in and you don't have any distortions around the edges. If you think it's too tight, you can also go with the wide setting. For skiing, on the other hand, I actually prefer the ultra wide setting as it will make everything look faster and you'll have your skis and everything in front of you in frame. Just be aware that ultra wide only works to a frame rate of up to 60 FPS. For anything higher, you have to go with wide or standard. All the previous shots were done with Rocksteady on, which I think is perfect for skiing. You can also turn it off and use the gyro data to stabilize in post. The software for it is called Gyroflow and it's free. And yeah, if you put the Osmo Action 4 onto an FPV drone, then stabilization in post definitely makes sense. But for skiing, I think Rocksteady is totally fine and will save you some work later. Because here in Austria, we like to work smart, not hard. And here are the different types of stabilization in comparison. If you do intend to use the gyro data to stabilize in post, I recommend shooting in 4x3 in order to utilize the full sensor. Now you may have noticed in Rocksteady Plus and Horizon Steady, the camera crops in a little bit, which means your field of view won't be as wide. Therefore, I think Rocksteady is really the way to go, hassle-free and looks good. And as promised, here are my opinions on other action cams. Let's start with the GoPro Hero 12, which is probably the closest competitor to the Action 4. Now from the comparison videos I've watched, I think the GoPro beats the Action 4 in dynamic range slightly, but that's really about it. When it comes to reliability and ease of use, I much prefer the Action 4. I know GoPro improved their battery life, which used to be horrific, but in wintry conditions, I still trust the Action 4 far more. Also, I find the menu on the GoPro really clunky. The touchscreen doesn't work as well. It's not as responsive. But like I said at the beginning, there are plenty of comparison videos out there. And overall, I think most other YouTubers would agree with me. Next, the Insta360 Ace Pro. To be honest, I don't know too much about it, but right away I'm already annoyed that you can't swap the lens cover because if you scratch it, then you're basically screwed. Also, I don't really like the flip out screen because I know I'm gonna break that right away when skiing and crashing. Sit. And last, the Insta360 X3. I do actually have one of those things and there are definitely cool and creative use cases for it. So I think comparing it to the DJI is a bit like comparing apples and oranges. It really depends on what your objective is. I'll definitely keep using it alongside the Osmo Action 4 like I did in my Chamonix video. However, I don't really like the image on the X3. It's hard to color grade and the overall workflow is quite time consuming, especially with their desktop app, which I also think is very clunky. So yeah, if I just had to pick one camera, it would be this one because this is like my skiing workhorse, so to say. I know I can trust it. I know it's hassle free. And yeah, that's kind of what matters most to me. For dislikes, I only have a few points. It would be nice if it had a quarter inch thread at the bottom, but I think the Osmo Action 4 is actually too compact to have that fit in it. But yeah, maybe DJI can make a little mount that has the quarter inch thread in there, so I don't have to make this weird construction. 
So yeah, having it in a mount would probably even make more sense than having it on the body. And at last, I hope the next model can do 120 frames per second in ultra wide because it does look quite nice when skiing. These are my thoughts on the DJI Osmo Action 4. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Peace. So pretty out there.